Hey everybody, so today I was just out there um, pollinating Venus flytrap flowers and I thought that'd be a really interesting video to do. Lots of you guys have probably seen a Venus flytrap, um, probably lots of you maybe never seen their flowers and we get lots of questions about them so I thought we'd go out there and take a look. So we're gonna go to the very back 40 all the way back beyond the greenhouse where we grow a lot more plants. Most of you probably never even been back there even when we're open to the public. So let's uh, head on back there. Okay, so I'm gonna use this big, beautiful display pot of uh, B52 Venus flytraps as our beautiful, lovely model today. Um, you can see there are definitely traps down there. So they definitely are Venus flytraps. Um, I'm just gonna try and go through most of the questions that we get about them. Beginners always ask, do Venus flytraps have flowers? They're such strange plants that I think it's hard to believe that they grow in a normal way that they make flowers that make seeds that make baby venus flytraps but that's absolutely what they do um and they're pretty they're pretty nice in mass like this they look really really beautiful um but most people aren't growing venus flytraps for the flowers let's face it that's probably why most of you haven't seen them uh, mostly we're growing them for these really spectacular insect catching traps um, so we usually tell people who are growing them at home to cut off the flowers. When they're big like this, cutting them off won't do very much. What we're trying to do by cut off the flowers is save the plant energy. Plants are all about energetics. And so if you cut off the flower, it's going to put all of its energy into making more traps. And again, that's mostly why we grow these plants. So if you cut them off now like this, when they're big and huge and open, you're really not saving much energy. You want to cut the flower off when it's short, like a little asparagus like that. It would have been great to get it when it was even smaller because I would have saved it more energy, but we can cut that one off right now. And what happens is the plant's gonna make a hormonal switch when we chop that off, just like that. And then it's gonna start making more traps right after that. If we had left that flower on, it was gonna make it that flower, open it up, it wither and go black, and then finally it would go back to making more traps. So that's why we cut them off. As far as pollinating them goes, um, if you wanted to make Venus flytrap seeds at home, they're pretty easy to pollinate. Newer flowers make um, more pollen. So that's a newer flower right there in the center of the screen. Let's see if I can point to it. Let's see, let's go to this one I can point to. So you can see there's a lot of pollen loaded up on those anthers, but you can't even see the female part of the flower, the stigma. It's, uh, it needs to unravel and become like feathery in order to be receptive. And we could probably find one that's doing that. Let's see. Yeah, I think like, that flower right there. Let's zoom in on that. You can see that the stigma is that little green guy in the center is very feathery now. When it's feathery like that, that means it's ready to receive pollen. So we would take pollen with like a brush or a fingertip off that first flower that was very polleny, one like that. And then we would put it on that little fluffy white stigma right there in the center. And that's what's gonna pollinate the flowers. When we're done with this, I'll take you on inside and we'll take a look at seeds and what to do with those next. Another question that we get a lot about um, carnivorous plants in general, but also Venus flytraps is, how is it that they're able to get their flowers pollinated um, without trapping them? So they're using insects to pollinate their flowers um, and they're also trapping insects. And so that seems really tricky. Um, one of the ways that carnivorous plants get around that is temporarily, so they use time. So these flowers have come up before most of the traps. There are a few traps down there, but there'll be way more bigger traps by the end of the summer. Another, another thing that we figured out is that these flowers are white. And so they're trying to attract something that's attracted to this white color, whereas the traps down here are dark red. And that means that there's probably a different insect that's attracted to these white flowers up here than there is to these death traps that are red down there. And another thing that you might notice is these flowers, if I come on back here, these flowers are actually held about a foot above all of those traps. And so that allows their little pollinators to skip across the top, moving pollen from one flower to another and making baby Venus flytrap seeds without getting trapped. Whereas unfortunate bugs 
that are crawling around down here will almost certainly get caught by one of these traps. And you can see right there, there's the carcass of three unfortunate little guys right there. It's really interesting to note that the exoskeleton, the outside part of the, um, of the prey, is very hard to digest, and so it still remains when the trap opens. The soft parts have all been turned into fertilizer of those bugs, but the dry part stays in there, and a lot of times that attracts a, uh, like a spider or a yellow jacket that thinks that's something to eat. But yeah, again, you can see it's kind of fun. Let's try this. If we go all the way up, look at these flowers and you're a little pollinator and you come down, da -da 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 -da, pollinate them. But then if you break on through and go down there, completely different story. Not quite as welcoming. So yeah, so that's Venus flytrap flowers. Probably still mostly cut them off unless you want seeds. Um, but they are really beautiful. And if you have big, healthy plants like this outside, you can absolutely let them flower. That's another question that we get a lot. Is it okay to let them flower? It is okay. Like I said, you won't get as many traps, but if you wanna make a bunch of seeds, it's totally okay to let them flower. Nobody would cut them off in the wild, so that's very natural. Anyways, I'm gonna head back into the greenhouse really quick because those plants are ahead of these ones out here. And so inside I'll already have seeds ripening and I can show you um, what those look like and when and how to collect them. So let's go in there and check that out now. So in here is the rest of our Venus flytrap collection. We're actually right in between transplanting the whole thing. So those ones outside have not been transplanted yet. And then these ones have been transplanted. So. Um, they're a little bit farther along because in the greenhouse it's a little bit warmer so I thought we'd come over here and see if we could find some Venus flytrap seeds. I feel like we could get distracted here all day looking at the beautiful plants but oh, there's some. So those black shiny little round guys on the top of the old flower there those are actually the seeds and I usually collect those with a piece of paper. I'll just hold the piece of paper underneath them and then knock them off with my fingers. I'm having trouble, for, there we go, come on foam. Knock them off with my fingers. Well, we'll go back looking at beautiful plants here for a second. And then they fall onto the paper and then you can either sow them right away. Venus flytrap seeds can be sown fresh immediately without stratification. Um, or you can save them for next spring. If you save them for next spring, you do need to sow the seeds um, and then stratify them. Stratification is wet and cold. And so usually we'll sow the seeds and then put them, uh, water them in, and then put them inside the refrigerator for about six weeks. And then when you take them out, they should uh, sprout probably about maybe four weeks, but maybe more like eight weeks after that. Now, it can take seven years to grow a Venus flytrap from seed to maturity. If you fertilize it with our Maxi fertilizer once a month, you can definitely speed that up. And if you grow them under lights, you can speed that up a little bit too but growing Venus flytraps from seed are probably not for beginners. And if you don't wanna to wait to make your own, you can go on our webpage and order some Venus flytrap seeds right now and give them a try. Now you can pretty much sow them any time of year. It's not quite too late now. Well, not any time of year. The winter's probably not the best time unless you're doing them under lights, but it's not too late to sow Venus flytrap seeds. It would've been better to do them earlier, but you could probably still do them now. Anyways, I think that's everything I know about Venus flytrap flowers and a lot I know, and a little bit more that I know about their seeds. And I hope you guys love learning about the flowers of these killer plants.